Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Just a couple of minutes uh, to the closing bell. I usually record these videos uh, after the markets uh, close, but uh, I have kids, they have a uh, high school basketball season and their games start a little earlier, so I try to uh, get everything in. So let's talk about it, right? Uh, if you are brand new to the channel, guys, uh, thank you very much for uh, tuning in. Uh, we usually run this broadcast Monday through Wednesday, sometimes on Thursday, and on the weekend, trying to give you guys the most unbiased view of the next uh, trading day. So this is where we are, right? Uh, November 2021, uh, we put in uh, our all-time highs. You can see that. Uh, we've been talking about 408.71 now for the last three weeks, four weeks, uh, it was just a matter of time that the market with this euphoric run-up, historical 2023 uh, type of environment that we tested those all-time highs. And here we are, guys. Here we are. Uh, we are at all-time highs. We are literally closing uh, 408.70s. And this really does kind of put the punctuation point uh, and the period of what 2023 has been all about and potentially what could be uh, coming up in the future. You know, do I believe the market has another 15, 20, 30% in it? Probably not, right? Probably not. Like we talk about all the time, uh, all good things uh, must come to an end. Every aggressive market usually does come to a rest, not necessarily a screeching stop. Uh, I don't believe we probably have the same type of action uh, going into 2024. But again, that's something we will... Uh, talk about uh, down the line when we get closer uh, to the end of 2023. But the point is, it was a hell of a run, right? Absolutely hell of a run. Uh, does it mean now that we are going to light it up for another, you know, for another two, three weeks? Hey, everything is possible, right? Absolutely everything is possible. Uh, stocks make huge runs, then they rest, and then the money goes into other names. Those stocks have a big run. Then they rest, then they go into other names. And it's been kind of like a rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat type of environment. And again, I feel like I, I've been sounding like an absolute broken record uh, for the last month, but this is kind of where we are. We are in a bull market. I know a lot of you people uh, that didn't participate in this whole bull run for whatever the reason was, uh, interest rates, inflation, your dog has chlamydia, who the hell knows, right? Everybody has an excuse so I get it, right? I get it. Every single time a person who didn't participate in any capacity this rally, here's the market at all-time highs. It's not the greatest feeling in the world because there's a good chance if you didn't participate in this market run-up, well, you probably sat on your hands for 2022 because, well, cash is a position, and we all know how incredible the market was uh, to the downside in 2022. So at some point, you got to figure out what's your role in the market, what's your a uh, vision for your career? What's your vision health for, for the next day? What's your process going to be? What's your short-term thinking? What's your long-term thinking? What's your approach if the market does go down in 2024? What's your approach if the market continues to rally? Again, at some point, um, you know, excuses, you know, it's like asses, right? Everybody has one. You know, nobody cares about excuses. The, the world, guys, always remember this, especially for, especially for you new folks, um, you know, just starting your, your investment journey or just a life journey in general. Everybody has their own problems, right? Everybody has their own issues. The world doesn't care about your labor pains, right? The world does not care about the labor pains. The, the world just wants to see the baby, right? That's it. We don't care about excuses. We want results. This is a result-driven business. Uh, you're either uh, able to identify the trend and try to maximize your potential in that trade, or you could sit there and find 3,046 excuses uh, that you didn't. And it's okay if you didn't, but the point is the market's going to do what the market's going to do regardless of what you think is going to happen. Uh, and we've been talking about this for pretty much this whole year. Again, trade the market you have, not the market you want. I, I hear every day people talking about the market's going to crash, the market's going to crash. Newsflash, the market crashed last year. 
Not last year anymore, right? So the point is going into this year, new year, guys, um, again, put yourself in a position of common sense, put yourself in a position of strength, and definitely put yourself in a position of the market that is right there for you. Whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, the market doesn't care what you think. It sure as hell doesn't care what I think. The point is the market's going to do what it got to do, right? And what's love got to do with it, we don't know yet. And that's what 2024 uh, is all about. Other than that, again, the same, um, you know, the same usual suspects, right? Same usual suspects. We've been talking about Meta for three days. You know, this is the monthly chart. Here's the daily chart. We've been talking about Meta for three days when it broke out. Meta continues to break out. Netflix has been out of its mind, right? Netflix has been out of its mind. Tesla, which I, you know, I still have a 10% runner uh, from, you know, from the uh, 247 level. You know, stock is 10 points higher. Is it possible it finally reclaims this next channel here and starts going up on air? Yeah, absolutely. Let's look at let's look at the option flow real quick on Tesla. Um, you know, look, you, know, you could see you could see what, what they're betting, right? You can see they're betting. They're betting the January five expiration, 260, 250s, uh, 260, 750s. I saw they were coming for uh, this year. Here's the January uh, end of January 260 calls. Somebody just snuck in a bet here. 887,000, you know, Tesla continues uh, to look really, really good. I mean, look at names, for example, you know, look at names, for example, like Shopify, right? Uh, Shopify uh, continues, right? Has this, had this magical run, continues to go higher. Amazon had a little bit of a rest today after yesterday's magnificent run, continues to act well. AMD had this phenomenal, phenomenal run, added another dollar and change there today. Uh, and names like Microsoft, right? Microsoft has been quiet for the last couple of days, but boy, oh boy, look how tight this thing is getting, right, guys? Look how tight Microsoft is getting here for the next couple of days. Microsoft gets out of this, this tight, tight channel here. The market flow is going to, the way that the market's been trading, the money flow is going to go into Microsoft. Look at the option flow, right? Look at the option flow on Microsoft. You know, they were coming today for the January 380 calls, 1.1 million. Another 380 calls, 640,000. 372.50s, 377.50 weeklies. You know, Microsoft is on deck. This one looks like it's the next one to go, the next one money rotation into. Look at Apple, right? Apple right now is hugging back the five-day moving average. It keeps on getting rejected off the five-day. Hey, if the money flow comes back into Apple, and let's look at the Apple option flow today, right? If the money flow comes back into Apple in the next couple of days, right, then you have a scenario. Look, they were coming for the 200 weeklies, 197.50 weeklies. If the money flow comes back and reclaims the five-day moving average, you know, this thing's going to wake up again. You know, look at even names like, um, you know, look at the names like Deer, right? Look at a name like Deer. Deer had this phenomenal run, right? Phenomenal two-day run, consolidated, woke up today. If Deer starts reclaiming back last week's highs, Deer's going to wake back again. So there's a lot of things going on. Yeah, the, the idea that, you know, the idea that the market uh, was only run up by a handful of stocks. I think, you know, that kind of went out the window. Even NVIDIA, right? I'll give you an example today, right? Even NVIDIA. So NVIDIA yesterday had this phenomenal run. Uh, we caught a pretty nice move into the close on NVIDIA. And there was a report came out uh, from a company in the name of Edgewater Research. First of all, Edgewater, every time I hear Edgewater, I think of a bagel store, right? Edgewater's in uh, northern New Jersey. Um, is it Monmouth? No, wait, it's northern New Jersey. Uh, I, I think of it's like a bagel shop, right? So Edgewater Research came out with a negative note today on NVIDIA. So I had, you know, I had a decent profit yesterday in NVIDIA. I gave it all back uh, this morning. I was actually sitting here and NVIDIA was up like $1.50, $1.70 uh, pre-market. And then some, they just, they, this note, note came out and I just watched the stock go down $5. So I wound up literally, literally having a net, you know, small net loss on the video from yesterday, but that's okay. You know, we bought it back on the five-day bounce and the damn thing bounced. Four and a half, five dollars off the balance. And look, the candle turned green. And that's the point of this market. The candle turned green. That means the close was higher, was higher than the open. And that means is the stock still, no matter that it was down you know, a little bit less than about one percent today, is only a dollar away from the highs of the day versus seven dollars from the low of the day. And it really does show you that buyers are still there, they're still buying dips, and they keep on rotating into different names. So going into tomorrow, now that we have the official highest close of all time on the NASDAQ 100, uh, 409.15, mark it down. This is the highest close. Now you know where you were when you had the highest close in the whole formation. The NASDAQ 
Can we rally into the end of the year? Absolutely. Is it possible we turn around and say, this is it. We got to, now we're going to swan dive. Everything's on the table, but make sure guys prepare for every single day. Put yourself in a situation that you're in control of the market. The market's not open for you to, to have a casino. That's what Las Vegas, that's what uh, the Caribbean's for. That's what Atlantic City's for. You know, this is what betting on DraftKings and FanDuel is for. This is the stock market. This is where professionals sit there and wait and wait and wait until amateurs put their feet out and then they chop them off because that's what professionals do. They're snipers, right? Professional traders are there doing this 10, 15, 20, 30 years. They're not sitting there for a 20 cent scalp. They're looking at the, the market as a whole, not the sum of the parts, not the in, ins and outs of every any single random day at a particular. And if you look what the NASDAQ 100 did, and ever since it got and reclaimed the 50-day moving average, it's been absolute just craziness for 2024. And it really does show you guys, just put this on your sticky pad for the rest of your investment career. Above the 50-day moving average is a green light. That's all it is. Below the 50-day moving average is a red light. Don't believe me? Go back to 2022. We spent 85% of the days underneath the 50-day moving average. That's a red light. And this year, we spent literally about 90% above the 50-day moving average. That's a green light, and that's called risk on. So going into tomorrow, trade-by-trade -trade basis, case-by-case -case basis, let me give you guys a couple of names uh, that I am uh, definitely liking uh, for tomorrow. Again, like I said, I'm watching Apple. Uh, I'm watching Apple potentially reclaiming back the five-day. I'm watching Microsoft. Okay, I'm watching Microsoft. Uh, reclaiming potentially back the 20-day moving average. Uh, Tesla, again, I'm looking to add at some point. I only got a 10% runner. Again, they're coming still with sizable bets uh, for short-term expiration on Tesla. I'd like to add somewhere either rising support on the five-day uh, or above uh, the previous day's channel, but this thing looks higher and they're continuing to bet. Uh, they are continuing to bet into the options market, short-term expiration, uh, if you look at the option flow here again, you know, 262.50s, uh, 262.50s, 262.50s for the first week of January. So market continues to be strong. The dips are continuing to work. Again, is this going to last forever? No, no. Eventually it will end. And when it's going to end, it's going to end very aggressively. But when it does, it's going to give us super opportunities to the downside. Quickly, uh, let's look at some of the pivots today. Again, you don't need to be creative in this tape. Uh, Chewy. Uh, if it opens uh, below 2230, use that area. Did not. If it needs to confirm the pre-market highs, Chewy got an upgrade today. 2280 uh, needs to build. Here was Chewy, right? Here was Chewy. It took out the pre-market highs. You'll see it here, right? So here was the whole pre-market high right here. It took it out 2280s, and Chewy went ballistic. It chewed through the shorts, Osh is right. So that was good. Uh, again, 408, and this is, this is you know, the market was strong. Uh, 40871 initially got rejected. If you guys remember, for all you guys that took the trade in the webinar, it got rejected. It went down a dollar, and the bulls swallowed up that dip and went higher. Uh, Microsoft never confirmed. Uh, Meta went nuts again, right? 347.50 needs to build. Uh, Meta went all the way to uh, 353.60. Uh, um, Nvidia did not shake off the 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 you know the the negative note on Edgewater. We caught a great great bounce uh, off the five day moving average, and I believe that is oh no that's not it. I'm sorry. Uh, Shopify seventy eight needs to build. Here was Shopify. Shopify had a nice little run today. Uh, seventy eight needs to build. Went almost to went went exactly to eighty. Uh, that was a nice little move there. O N O N thirty one fifty only went to thirty two, but nice little pop there. Uh, and I believe that is it. So that's it, guys. That's it. Market continues to do well. Hopefully, you guys are continuing to do well. Hopefully, we continue to do well in the future. Happy, healthy, uh, and most important, solvent if you are uh, having any aspirations of a long-term trading career. Guys, God bless. I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.